Kia ora noe tiwi, no mai hoki mai ki tēnei punua pā pāho. Hello everybody and welcome back to the show. My name is Tiki Harawira and I'm your host. And this is Starting Fitness Podcast. And whether you're first time into fitness, you're a fitness enthusiast, you're a beginner personal trainer or you're an aspiring gym owner, this is your step-by-step -step guide to starting fitness. Let's go! Hey, how's that? How's that for an intro? Anyway, welcome back to the show. Episode three, three deep. How good? Um, excited to be here again. Now, today's episode, we're gonna go over how I balance uh, weight training and running, and also touch on how I'm training for my first marathon. Now before we get into the show, there's some housekeeping I'd like to I'd like to do. Please like and share and follow the, the show. Share the podcast if you get any value from it. Or if you know someone who will get value from it, share it to them. Share it because yeah, share it to whoever. Because the more people because the more people we have, the more eyes and ears we have on the show. The more people I reach, the more people I get to help. So help me help you help everyone else. It really means a lot to me if you guys yeah, help this channel grow. Now let's get into it. Why did I start running? Why am I running a marathon? Now if you don't know what a marathon is, it's a road race where the participants run for, it's a running road race where people, where the participants run for 42 and a half kilometers. Now for my English and American fans out there, that's 26 and a half miles. So it's a big, big, big distance, long, it's a long run. You get the pros who finish it in about two, two to three hours, and the amateurs around about four to five. So it's a long, it's a long time, it's a long race. Now, am I a runner? No. Do I think I'm a runner? No. Do I look like a runner? No. I'm just a, I'm just a, just a cousin that loves to give it a go. <laughs> now, why I started running again? Now, back in my, back in my heyday, back when I was a, a young, back when I was younger, I used to play rugby and I used to play rugby league. And so that was my sport. So running was kind of a part of my sport. But I hated it. I never liked running. I only done it so I could get fit for, for my sport. And then when I got fit, I wouldn't run. I'd do sprints maybe, but any kind of long distance running, I hated. And the furthest I had ever ever ran before I started running again was 8k, and even then, that was a that was a big big task for me. I remember the big dreaded 8k run before school that we used to do. Everyone talked about it the Friday morning 8k down in Main Beach. And I hated it. <laughs> So if I hated something, why did I start back? Why did I get back into it? Now I've always, so when I was younger, I was fit. I was athletic because I was playing sports. But when I stopped playing, I got unfit. And I've always, and I always love being fit and athletic and strong and, you know, just, that's what I love. I love the feeling of being fit and being athletic. Now of recent, in the recent years, I've been toying with this idea of getting back into running because of me missing that feeling of being fit and athletic. So after I finished playing rugby, and finished playing rugby league, in my early 20s, I, I just stopped playing so I had other, other things I wanted to do. I wanted to travel and travel the world and do all that stuff. Party, 
make silly decisions as you do as a young young 20 year old but one of those decisions that I made one of the mistakes I made was to stop playing footy and to stop running or stop training as an like an athlete so for my for my early 20s I was a gym I was a gym bro yeah I just disregarded running altogether there was this huge con misconception that I had that running would kill your gains. You know, running would you, running would make you skinny. Running would make you, you know, you'll get skinny. Like, because when you look at the pros, the pro runners, they're all skinny. You know, and so that's what I thought. Uh, if I want to be muscly, if I want to be a gym bro, it's not what I used to say. But if I want to, if I want to be muscly, if I want to get big and strong, running needs to. Running is no longer in the equation and in my fitness regimen. So all so all of my twenties, my early twenties, I was just a gym bro. You know, eight eight heaps. Just just lifted weights. Done you know, done those done the bro splits, the chest back and all that stuff and trained arms and I was just your typical gym bro who would Stay, stay clear away from cardio, any any sorts of cardio. I was afraid that it was gonna, I was just gonna get skinny and I was it was gonna mess up my gains. So that's what I done for about three to four years, till of recent, till about last year. Now recently, I've been following a couple of influ uh, fitness influence influencers. Fitspos, who are runners and bodybuilders and, and strong men and so they're endurance athletes but they also maintain and hold a lot of muscle so this is like Nick Bear and Hunter McIntyre and Fergus Crawley and all these guys these are all my the inspiration all my inspirations and they're all runners and so I always love the idea of being fit and athletic again and you know just I love how they their, their, their style of training and how they how the how they look and how they train and this is what I aspire to be that's that's basically why I started running again now if you know me you know that I love listening to podcasts I listen to them every day I listen I love listening to audio books I listen to them every day listen to them on my way to work while I'm working you know I just love learning new things and taking on new information now from my quote-unquote research my podcast listening I found I found uh, one of the best kept secrets from the endurance world this is from the likes of uh, from from the likes of Peter Atia and Rich Roll and all these endurance athletes, they all spoke. And Nick B also, they all spoke about this this best kept secret. Now, what is this kept secret? This kept secret is zone two training. Now, I'm no expert, and if you did want to get into the nitty gritty, the nit, the you know the the physiological and the physical response and all the science behind zone two training, then I advise. Not that I advise, I recommend you look up these guys, Nick Bear. So if you just type in Nick Bear Zone 2 or uh, Peter Atia Zone 2, Rich Roll Zone 2, they all talk about this. And these are all endurance athletes. And they, they, they get into, they, they'll get more in depth on the explanation. But if you want the cuzzy version, the version that I know, <laughs> then stick around. So. From what I've gathered from my quote-unquote research, now I'm no expert, but from what I've gathered, is there are essentially five zones for when you exercise. So there's zone one, which is your walk, which is walking. And there's zone two, which is easy to mild intensities. And you got zone three, which is moderate intensity. Zone four, which is somewhat hard to hard, 
and then zone five, which is very hard. That's that's your max effort. Now, why is zone two so special? Now, what what's the what's the What's this? What's why, why does Zone Two stick out, and why is it the best kept secret from the endurance world? Why is it that? Um, why is it that I want to talk about Zone Two? So basically, Zone Two, which is also your aerobic zone, is the most effective way to train your aerobic capacity. So, which basically means it's the most, it's the best way to train your fitness to train your ticker, to train your heart. So that's why zone two is so important. Now the mistake that people usually make, and what I made, is they run their easy runs too hard, and they run their hard runs too easy. So let's take me for an example. When I used to, when I used to go out on my runs, let's say I'm going for a two, a three K run, I'll run that run all out effort you know i'm going balls to wall red lining i'm going and trying to get trying to finish this 3k as fast as i can now the problem with this is when you're doing this when you're running this effort you're running too hard to be in the zone two window so you're not getting any aerobic benefits or you're not getting you're not maximizing enough on this aerobic benefits and you're also not running hard enough to get those that, that zone four benefits. So you're kind of in this middle zone, this, which is zone three. You're kind of in the zone three zone, which some people like to call it the gray zone because you're not really getting enough. You're not running slow enough to get the benefits from the zone two. And you're also not running hard enough to get the benefits from zone four. So you're, you're just in this middle zone where it's not as effective so if you were either training zone two or just training zone four. And that was the, that's the problem that a lot of people do. They'll do their runs and they'll run way too hard and they're not maximizing their, the potential of how much they can get from that run. So that was me. Every time I'd, I'd go for a run, I'd be running fast. My heart's racing, I'm redlining, my face is all red. It's a hard run. And it's only two k's, and I didn't get that much. I don't get that much benefits from that zone two because I'm running too hard. So that was one of the problems. Another problem was when you're in, when you're running that zone three, when you're running these hard runs, it's taxing on the body. You know, your your muscles ache. Your muscles are breaking down because you're running too hard. You're, 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 fit, you're getting that burn, so the lactic acid, the lactic acid is building up, all that stuff. It's because you're running hard. Obviously, it's going to be a hard run, so then it's going to be harder for you to recover. Your muscles are going to be sore for longer, so then you can't show up for the next day. And it's also taxing on your on your mental, because when you've got a when you're running doing hard runs all the time. It's pretty hard on, on the mental, like, you have to be quite disciplined to stick to, to stay to it. So when you're, let's say, for an example, you finish mahi, you finish a big day at work, and then you've got a session plan, and it's a hard run, that's the last thing you want to do, especially if you're, you're stuffed from work, and then you have to go do this hard run. So it's also, it's, it's taxing on the body, it's taxing on the mental, on your mind, and you're not getting any benefits from it. Or you are, but you're not getting as much benefits as you would if you're running easy, or if you're doing sprints, or you know, doing some running hard and doing short intervals for that zone four. Now what's the fix? Simple, run easy, run slow. Now there's heaps of ways you can complicate this and be your scientific -y and scientific -y. it's not even a word <laughs> there's heaps of ways for you to figure out uh, how to be how how to, how to know if you're in the right zone you can go all you can go all out and you can get a lactate uh, measure or 
get a heart rate monitor, we can follow your watch. But the easiest way and the, 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 the easiest, the entry point, the easiest entry point and the easiest way for you to figure out if you're in this zone too, is the talk test. So the talk test basically, let's say you're on a run, to know if you're running easy enough, you have to be able to hold a conversation and string a sentence or two before having to take a breath. And that's how you know if you're running in zone two, if you're training in, in that zone two threshold. So if you go on your run, and it, now it's easier for me because I was running with Sam, so what we would do, we'd, we'd go for a run and then we'd talk to each other while we were running. And if we're, if we're finding it hard to hold that conversation, then we're going too fast. And if we were, you know, if we were able to pick up the pace and we we're still being able to talk, then we're going at the right pace. Now, the other, the hard thing about this is some people find that you're, you're going too easy, but that's the secret. When you're running easy, your workouts are easy, you're getting the, zone, the benefits from zone two, which is you're building up your aerobic base, which, may, which also means you're getting fitter and the runs are easy so you can run for longer and you can build that base up and over time you've got this huge fitness base and that's the secret that's how you build this huge engine is from running easy and that's but the problem is people when they start off when they're doing these runs so for myself when I say people I mean myself when they're doing these easy runs they feel too easy and it feels like they're not getting a, a proper workout in because at the start for myself we were we had to do run walks so we had to do like little intervals so we would run for five minutes and then we'd walk for one minute to bring my heart rate down and then this is how this is what i had to do to to keep it into that zone two in that zone two threshold but over time your pace gets bigger, like your pace gets faster and you're able to run a bit faster but still keep your, your heart rate down and keep your keep yourself in this threshold. Now that's the, that's the big secret, zone two training. And this way of training got me to fall, this is how I fell in love with running. This is how I started enjoying to run because the runs were easy. I was getting heaps of benefits from it and I, it, it improved over like quite quickly at the start <coughs> and I was able to show up again and again and again and that's how that's that this is how you build fitness this is the secret that I wish I had learned ages ago and if you didn't know the secret now you know and I promise you this this stuff works if you don't believe me, if you don't believe the Cuzzy science, then you can go up and do do some bit of research on the other guys that I mentioned earlier. And they'll give you the science, scientific ways of how to build uh, endurance, which is, they'll basically tell you what I'm telling you, but in a fancier way. Now we've got that out of the way. We're gonna, we can now go through how I balance uh, my weight training and strength training with running. Because as I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of, there was a huge misconception that running would hinder your, your, strength, your strength goals and would interfere with your strength goals and this is actually a thing called the interference effect so there were studies done don't know how long ago but these studies were there were strength athletes there were endurance athletes and then there were strength and endurance athletes and the interference effect concluded that when you're doing when you're doing them both they they kind of cancel each other out because because of the adaptations, they're different adaptations. So one is a strength adaptation and another is an endurance adaptation. So 
when you're doing them both together, they cancel each other out and your body isn't able to figure out which one you want to do. Do you want to build endurance or do you want to build strength? Now there are measures you can take, there are things you can take and manipulate to, to counteract this interference effect and to, to lessen that effect. Now these measures are recovery, nutrition and timing. Now by recovery, this is all your basic stuff, your sleep, you have to be getting at least six to nine hours of sleep every day. Your sleep is, has to be priority, actually. Uh, so that's your sleep has to be on point. Uh, stress management has to be on point. You know, because you're already putting yourself through a lot of stress with your training. You have to be, you can't have your, your stress load from training and then also stress load from from your from work or, or your life balance or anything. You, you know, you don't need that extra stress. So stress management is a huge one and your recovery modalities like the rolling out your, your trigger point your your stretching and all that stuff your mobility work all that stuff all plays a role in minimizing this interference effect and the other measure is your nutrition <coughs> your nutrition needs to be on point you need to be eating enough to be able to handle strength training and running if you're if you're running you're already losing a lot of energy when you're doing the run so you need to be backfilling and then eating adequate amount of calories to fuel your performance so your recovery needs to be on point your nutrition needs to be on point and the last one is timing now in these studies these control groups I can't remember the actual what they actually done but what they were doing was they were training they were training an endurance so let's say they were going for an, a one hour run and then they were doing a 40 an hour uh, gym session a weight session so of course because if they're doing them back to back of course one is going to affect the other and vice versa if you're strength training first then the second one you train, it's going to be affected because you've used up all your energy in that first session. Now, when we time these correctly, so if you time them properly and then program them in, so if you're so if you're doing a, a two a day, a double day, then what I do is I'll train in the morning, I'll run in the morning, and then I'll run in the evening, and that gives me enough time for my body to adapt and get all the, uh, the adaptations Ooh. get all these adaptations and what this does is this allows my body to so once I've so I'll train in the morning and then I've given myself enough time for my body to get the appropriate adaptations and you know grow and get better from the run I just done and then eat the food, fuel up, and then by the evening I'm all fueled and ready to go and then I can do my, my gym sessions in the in the evening. Or you can you can do it like Monday you'll run, and then Tuesday you'll do weights, and then Wednesday you'll run, and then Thursday. It, it depends how you want to program it, but when you time these properly and program them in like this, and this allows your body to adapt and grow and grow in both ways so your endurance and your strength goes up together now obviously if you're just uh, specializing in strength or specializing in like if you're just going for the single modality then of course you're going to get stronger than the person who's doing two but it's absolutely possible for you to improve in your running and improve in, in your strength And this is proven from, there's a whole sport that proves this, this interference effect wrong. There's a the sport, there's CrossFit, all these CrossFitters, they're all fit, they're all runners, and they're all strong as hell. And they're freaking massive. And they do some big Ks, some of these CrossFitters. So it's, it's super possible. It's, anyone can do it. You just have to have everything in check. You can't just... <coughs> You know, you can't just kind of fake your way through it. You have to 
your recovery has to be on, your nutrition has to be on, and your programming has to be on. Now, how I'm training for the marathon. Now, the, a way that I do it is I prioritize based on my goals. And I got this of Nick Bear. Where, so let's say, so last year, the marathon isn't, isn't until July this year. So last year wasn't a main goal of mine. So my one of my, my primary goal was strength. So I wanted to get as strong as I could before I transitioned into this marathon phase. So my training, my training was, I was training four times a week, strength training, and I was running twice a week. And that's what I've done for a few months, where I slowly built up my my fitness with these with those two runs in the week, and I was getting stronger with the four sessions of the week. Now, because we're shit, we're eight weeks out from the marathon, or nine weeks out from the marathon, the marathon is now my priority. So I've dropped my weight sessions down to three a week, and my runs a three to four usually about three a week and then that's how i do it and then as i get closer to the marathon my weight training will come down again to about twice to once a week and then my running will ramp up to four a week you know so that's how that's how i do it i prioritize on whatever my goal is now if i was going for a powerlifting goal or whatever my weight training you know you just you kind of balance it out depending on what your goal is for that for that phase and that's how you that's how I balance them out so my current split I'm, I'm training I'm weight training three times a week and I'm running three times a week and then maybe a fourth if I can fit one in so it'll go something like this Monday is my I'll train legs and mobility uh, Tuesday is a is an easy run. Wednesday I'll do mobility and I'll do the the class at the gym. At I'll do Sam's class, so weights. Thursday is a temp a tempo run or interval run. Uh, Friday is my double day. Depending on how I'm, how I'm feeling, I'll do a Friday early an easy run. And then Friday I'll do weights again, <coughs> which is an upper body session. And then Saturday is my rest day. Depending on how I am with work, I'll either do my long run Saturday or Sunday, depending on how I'm feeling. And that's my split at the moment. And it was so far so good until last week, or maybe it's been a week and a half now. I think it's been a week and a half. I've actually got a bit of a niggle and so just in the inside of my ankle the it's called the posterior tibialis tendon I've kind of aggravated that a bit and it's been bugging me for the last week or so and this is going to be my the, the big mistake that I think I've done and one of the lessons I've learned so far in this this marathon prep. So last I think it was a week ago, maybe it was nearly two weeks ago. I had a long run plan. Now the long run was good. I was an 18k run. Uh, I felt good. I done a different route that I don't I usually do, and I ran at the back of, at the back of Narang, which is near my place. And if you know Narang, there's a lot of hills in this in this suburb. So, which is what I wanted. I wanted to try and do more hills because obviously when you train hills, the training's harder. So the first 10 Ks of the run, so the first 10 Ks of the run was all hilly. And I've never done any hills before. So there's red flag number one. Now about midway through the run, I was about six k's in. My Achilles and that tendon, I didn't really know what it was, but that muscle in there, I thought it was just like a, the inside of my calf muscle and the, my Achilles tendon 
and the inside of my ankle started to flare up a bit. Now that should have been my sign to walk it off because it, it was a pretty sore. But no, I carried on. I pushed through the pain because I wanted to get this run ticked off. And then I got another, got about another five Ks. Now on my run, on my the program that I'm doing, it's the the paces that said I had to do was I had to go 10k easy, easy pace, so zone two, and then the last 8k you want to be running at your marathon pace, and which is so my marathon pace I want to be running is about 5:40. But then I thought, no, I'm feeling good. I read a couple of things online, saw a couple of Instagram posts, and they where where they in these posts they said you should be training just below your marathon pace. And I thought, you know what, you're right, that sound that makes sense. Train below your marathon pace, so then you make your marathon pace easy. Anyway, my last 8k was supposed to be a 5:30, 5:30 pace. Instead, I, I I felt good, so then I pushed the pace for the last 8Ks and I ran a 5.10, 5.15 pace for the last 8K. Bear in mind, this is all on my, my sore ankle that I've got. <coughs> and I felt good, I pushed it hard, finished the run, felt sweet, and then the ankle flared up. My posterior tibialis tendon flared up, and I just thought, because after when you do a big run, you think you, you'd think you'd get sore. You know, you might, your your feet your feet sore, your your bones are sore. You know, you're just a bit banged up because it's a long run and you haven't really I haven't really done these paces before. But this pain hung around longer than I expected, and it's hung around ever since. So all the way till now. So now my my running's kind of scaled back. So last week I didn't do much running. And then even this week, I've only ran twice. And I've been a bit disheartened about the whole situation. And this is a lesson. This is a lesson learned. And now I know. And what that lesson is, listen to your body. Don't be an ego. Don't, don't let your ego dictate your runs or your workouts. Because you'll pay for it. And you'll pay for it hard. And I did pay for it. So now this week, my training splits a bit changed. So now I'm doing a lot of recover, a lot of rehab, trying to. So it's not, it's not torn or anything, because I can still walk on it and I can still run on it. But it, it just, it's there, you know, like the niggle was there, and it, it's hurting a bit. But so that's that's a lesson learned. So the lesson, the lesson for you to take away from that is. Listen to your body and build your build your mileage or your your, your K's slowly. Now for me, I think I built too fast, 18K, and I don't think I was ready for that distance. Or I, I would have been ready for that distance had I only just done an easy 18K. But I didn't. <laughs> I done a, a hilly 18k that was also a fast finish that I and I haven't even ran that pace before but I just I felt good at the time my ego got the better of me and I hurt myself so build slowly start slow and build up slowly let the body adapt to, to these new to this new stimulus and let your body get stronger over time don't try and rush into things because you think you have to do all these big things. Uh, ignore everyone else. Stick to your plan, and yeah, just trust in your plan, which is what I didn't do. I didn't trust in my own plan. I didn't listen to my listen to my body, and the ego. My ego got the better of me. So listen to your body. So I've battled through my fair share injuries, and. A lesson that I'd like you guys to take away if you guys are going through one is there's always something for you to do. So for myself, I've hurt my posterior with the inside of my ankle, so I've got a bit of ankle pain, just the tendon near my ankle. So I'm doing a lot of rehab, a lot of recovery stuff for that ankle. 
I'm still eating right. My, my nutrition and sleep has stayed the same. I'm still weight training and I'm doing a lot of calf raises and all, all that stuff, doing self massage. You know, I'm just doing everything I can to, to get this leg all healed up. Instead of like what most people do is when they get an injury, they say, oh, I can't do anything now. I stay off it and then they just go sit on the couch and hope for it to get better. No, that's not the, that's not the go. The go is do everything else, do everything you can to, to get everything right. And that's how you recover from an injury faster. And so, so, what, so for myself, for my ankle, my tendon, I'm still, my nutrition is still mint. My training's still good. Everything apart from my running, and I'm running just slowly. I've, I've dropped the k's. I've dropped the pace, and I'm just trying to build that that strength back up in that tendon. And I'm taking it slow, so. Even though that I've got the, the marathon in eight weeks or however many weeks, I'm not going to rush it because then that's just going to make the injury even worse. And yeah, that's how, that's how I'm battling through this injury. So I'll keep you guys, keep you guys in the loop of, keep you guys in the loop and we'll see how this, how this goes. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening to me blab on about my injuries and i hope you guys got some some nuggets from this one another another episode enjoyed i've enjoyed to make it's made my drive way easier it's made me it's teaching me how to be more effective and teaching me how to talk better and communicate better and just trying to be better so thanks for tuning in everyone i hope you guys all have a good day and I'll see you guys next time. Modi or up.